So with our technology rapidly improving and our graphics cards and digital cameras pumping out crisper, more lifelike images than ever before, it isn't surprising that we're wondering how long it will be until we get something that could match or exceed our eye's natural resolution or refresh rate. But what exactly are the specs of our eyes? Does the question even make sense? Since we see things not with a camera lens and GPU, but with a squishy eyeball and a hunk of meat inside our brain? Now, we here at TechWiki are not the first to answer this question in terms of discrete numbers. But even so, tons of people out there are still perpetuating the same myths, like the famous assertion that the human eye can't see more than 24 frames per second, which garners eye rolls from enthusiasts everywhere. So we're going to take a stab at explaining the truth. Obviously, our eyes don't work exactly the same way as digital cameras, but they do operate with a few concepts in common. Just like an image sensor in a camera can capture a certain number of pixels, our eyes have a finite number of rod and cone cells in them. Plus, our eyes need different visual elements of whatever we're looking at to be small enough so that they don't appear pixelated. So in this way, our eyes are sort of kind of digital, but our brains render images we can understand by examining how the view from our eyes is continuously changing, which sounds a lot closer to how analog technology works, something you can learn more about up here. So this means that the commonly cited answer of 576 megapixels, which was decided upon with some rather complicated math, which we've linked to in the video description, needs to be taken with some caveats. Don't get me wrong, our eyes are indeed incredible tools for seeing the world in detail. I mean, 576 megapixels is equal to having a 32,000 by 18,000 pixel monitor. This would be like having an array of over 275 1080p monitors. This makes it sound like you'd need 576 million pixels to have a photo that fit exactly within your field of view to completely fool you into thinking that the picture is actually real life. But remember that since you only see things sharply that are right in front of you, with your peripheral vision being a lot blurrier, the actual number is only somewhere around 8 or 9 megapixels. And again, since your brains don't work in a digital manner, the real number can vary quite a bit depending on factors like ambient lighting. But let's say you're less worried about buying a camera that can match the capabilities of the human eye, and more about buying a graphics card and high refresh rate monitor that can crank out so many FPS that your favorite game couldn't possibly appear any smoother. Is that even possible? Well, possibly. In theory, a human brain could process a thousand frames per second, according to scientific research, into how quickly our neurons can fire signals. But just like the theoretical max speeds of things like SATA drives, this number doesn't mean a whole lot in practical terms. Different people have different maximum refresh rates, and the real-life upper limit seems to be around 250 hertz, depending on what study you look at. But remember again that our brains and eyes aren't exactly digital, and don't render discrete frames the way a graphics card would, so there isn't an actual number of frames your eyes can push to your brain. Rather, that 250 number is the point at which motion becomes realistic looking for people with good eyesight. And of course, there are diminishing returns as you approach this number. For example, it's easy for most people to tell the difference between 20 and 60 FPS, but 220 and 260 will be indistinguishable to a lot of folks. So while it is possible to attach meaningful numbers to the spec sheets of our eyes and brains, individual differences along with the not quite analog or digital nature of our bodies means that you should take them with a grain of salt. And that the most important thing is to buy stuff that will give you an experience that you think looks good. Unless of course you're cool with waiting around for the world's first 18,000p monitor to hit the market. Whoa! I'm on TechWiki! Anyways, TunnelBear VPN. You can tunnel up to 20 different countries and browse the internet as if you are in that country. They have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and they also have a Chrome extension. Just choose the country that you want in the app, turn TunnelBear on, and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to a new location, similar to how I just came here from LTT. 
When you turn TunnelBear on, two things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and your public IP address gets switched, so you show up to other people as if you're in that country that you picked earlier. They also have a top-rated privacy policy and do not log user activity. You can try TunnelBear VPN with 500 megabits of free data and with no credit card required. And if you decide to get the unlimited data plan, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash Linus. Thanks for watching, everybody. Give the video a like or a dislike. Get subscribed if you haven't already. And check out our other channel, uh, Channel Super Fun, where we do super fun things. I'm not sure what's up there, but it's something fun. Go watch that. I'm going to leave. Bye.